Hi everyone, and welcome to another Waiver OS video tutorial. In our previous video, we went through the first login process. In this tutorial, we'll customize the Captive Portal landing page, making sure it reflects your brand and gives guests a smooth and welcoming experience. Before we jump into the settings, let's quickly go over the structure of the Captive Portal. There are three main pages. First, the landing page. This is what guests see when they connect to Wi-Fi. They can view photos, a welcome video, and accept the terms, privacy, and marketing policies. Next, after clicking the Connect button, they're taken to the Authentication page, where they can log in using email, Facebook, mobile, vouchers, or they can pay for internet access. Finally, once they're authenticated, they're redirected to the Connected page, which confirms their connection. This usually includes a thank you message or some relevant info. So let's log into the Waiver Admin panel. For this example, I'll customize the landing page for a hypothetical hotel called Celestial. I'll go to the Captive Portal section on the sidebar and choose Landing Page. This is the first thing your guests will see when they join your Wi-Fi. Inside the Captive Portal Builder, you have full control over how this page looks and works. Looking at the mobile preview, we can see the default layout. The logo at the top, followed by a welcome text. Four images, a video, the company's contact details, the terms section, and the connect button. Let's start adding our branding, logo, photos, and a video. I'll go to the media gallery page. First, I'll upload the Celestial Hotel logo. Then, I'll add a welcoming background image that fits the vibe of the venue. Just a note, this background is used with the custom background and custom background minimal themes. Next, I'll upload a footer logo, which will appear at the bottom of the portal. Then, I'll upload a few photos, maybe areas of the hotel, services, or anything you want guests to see. All images are auto resized, but the aspect ratio affects how they look, so it's best to use the same size for all four. Finally, I'll upload the banner image that guests see once they're connected and click Save. As you can see, the images are in place. Now in the Video tab, we can upload a video to be played on the landing page. In the Files section, we can also upload other media, like images, videos, PDFs, or even custom fonts, to make the portal more personalized. All supported file types are listed right here. Back to the landing page, it's already looking good, but let's tweak it a bit more. Now let's take a quick look at the available Captive Portal themes. You can choose from several built-in options, like Gray which will apply a simple gray theme, Black which it comes with a black background and some fixed content. Brown which can be used on a classic venue. Dark blue which has a Wi-Fi icon on connect button. Custom background which lets you upload your own background image. Custom background minimal, that is similar but skips the first page entirely. Elegant, a more styled layout with round edges. An elegant minimal a simpler version of the elegant theme without the first page. Each theme controls the layout and visual style of your captive portal, so you can pick the one that fits your branding best. For the purpose of this video, I'll select the custom background theme, which allows me to show a custom background image, and then click Save to apply it. I'll also change the font. There are lots of options. I will go with Manro. Now let's look at the video settings. We can set the video to autoplay, or require guests to watch it before they can click Connect. I'll enable both the autoplay and force guests to watch options. We can also choose whether the video appears on the first page, the authentication page, or both. Same goes for images, and they can also be shown in a slider or as static images in a vertical layout. I will select the slider option. Once done, I'll click save again. Now the new font is applied and the photo slider looks great. As you can see in the preview window, since we forced guests to watch the video, the connect button is currently disabled. It will activate once the video finishes. Now let's take a look at the terms and privacy settings. Here we can configure how the system handles terms, privacy, and marketing consent for our guests. As you can see on the preview, the terms and privacy section consists of the main text, a clickable link, read all the terms of use and policy, followed by three checkboxes. The first option is terms validation on first page. If this is enabled, guests will be required to accept the terms of use right on the first page of the captive portal. Next, we have terms validation on off page. If this is enabled, guests will be asked to accept the terms of use on the authentication page instead.
The option Require Privacy Validation prompts guests to confirm their acceptance of the privacy policy. This setting appears as a checkbox with the text, I agree with the privacy. Another option is Require Marketing Consent, which asks guests for marketing consent, allowing them to agree to receive promotional content. This shows as a checkbox labeled Allow Marketing by default. Finally, there's the Show Full Terms Text option, which when enabled, allows the full terms and privacy text to be displayed before guests accept the terms. It will show the terms section main text as well the clickable link read all the terms of use and policy, which will open the terms page, and if disabled only the checkboxes are displayed. Keep in mind that both the terms and checkboxes, such as I agree with the terms, can be fully customized to suit your preferences. The terms and privacy legal text can be fully edited and customized from the legal compliance page right here. Now back to landing page global text section, all these term checkbox labels can be customized to fit your wording. If you're a more advanced user, note that you can also use HTML scripting inside the input fields. For example, to make a clickable link in a checkbox, I'll type opening bracket a space href equals terms.php in double quote. Closing bracket terms of use slash a in brackets. I will hit save to apply the changes. Now as you can see the checkbox text includes a direct link to the terms page, keeping the terms section clean while maintaining full functionality. You can get really creative with HTML scripting to customize text styles and other properties for further customization. Next back to options let's check out the live menu feature. This is a digital menu tool for restaurants, coffee shops, hotels, and other venues. Guests can view it during their Wi-Fi login via the captive portal or a QR code. From the live menu section, we can add a menu button to the portal. You can show it on the first page or authentication page. It's totally up to you. Let's rename the button to something like view our menu. Clicking configure menu takes you to the live menu app management page where you can manage menu items, descriptions, photos, and more. We will explore that in another video. Next up is the chat plugin section. Here you can enable real time chat tools like Tidio, Talk and Meta Messenger allowing you to engage in real time with guests while they're connecting. You can also use it to promote services, offer deals, or just collect feedback. Setup instructions for each supported plugin are available in the instructions pop up here. Now let's head to global texts. Here, we edit the default text across the captive portal. For example, I'll set the page title to Celestial Hotel and the footer, Copyright Celestial Hotel 2025. The buttons like connect and return are also customizable. In the terms section, I'll update the title to terms and policies and write a message asking guests to kindly read and accept the terms to proceed. You can also change the terms link text, the labels of each checkbox, and the error message shown when a checkbox isn't selected. Now let's look at the first page texts. This section typically displays a welcome message and you can enhance it by adding images, videos, or links using the icons. I'll go to the Files section in the Media Gallery to upload an image for this example. This image will serve as a clickable button, directing guests to the hotel's Instagram page. Once uploaded, I'll copy the image source path, navigate to the first page text to this editor, click the image icon, and paste it into the relevant field. After pasting the path, the image is embedded, allowing you to resize or align it as needed. Next, I'll select the image, click the link icon, and paste the hotel's Instagram URL. Then, in the target option, I'll choose New Window to ensure the link opens in a separate tab. I will click Save, and now the Instagram image will act as a button that opens the property's profile. Same goes for the Contact section. You can change titles and links, for example, I can swap Website with TripAdvisor and paste Hotel's TripAdvisor page. For the final touches, I'll visit the theme editor and select the custom background theme I'm currently working with. From there, I can adjust the styling of all texts, borders, and buttons. As an example, I'll change the link color to a blue shade and set the button hover to a golden hue. After selecting your desired color, click the color palette icon to apply it, then hit save. The theme editor section lets you customize the appearance by adjusting colors and other options for each theme. For advanced customization, you can also apply custom CSS and JavaScript code, offering endless possibilities to align the design with any venue's brand.
Moving on, let's talk about the ad page. This feature lets you display ads or sponsored content before guests get to the portal. You can turn it on, choose how long it shows, and even customize the countdown text. Just like the landing page, you can add any media here, local photos, videos, or external content like a YouTube embed. First, I'll go to the Media Gallery's Files section to upload a video. Once uploaded, I'll copy its path and return to the ad page. Then, I'll click the video icon and paste the path. After aligning and resizing the video to fit the portal, I'll click Save. Then, using the source code option, I can apply custom video controls like autoplay. Once the changes are applied, I'll hit save again and reload the preview window to check how my ad page behaves. You can find more details about landing page features in our documentation at docs.wavertech.com. I hope this gave you a clear look at how simple and flexible it is to customize your captive portal landing page with Waver's integrated builder. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.